in a country which prides itself on the freedom of speech and free values, should a journalist raised in India by a single mother be denied his overseas citizen of India card months after he wrote an article critical of the Prime Minister in Time magazine. Atish Tasir, who joins us now in this one-on-one -on -one interview, is not just an exemplary author, he considers himself to be a proud Indian and believes that the decision to take away the card because his biological father happened to be of Pakistani origin was incredibly wrong. He was 21 when he got in touch with his father and his father had a British citizenship at the time when he was born. Today, Atish has the support of outstanding internationally renowned personalities, Margaret Atwood, Salman Rushdie. They've written to the Prime Minister. But perhaps more than anything else, this is being seen about vindictiveness. Either it's our way in what you write or it's the highway. We're very privileged to have Atish uh, with us at this stage. Um, Atish, one of the, the, the points which have been raised is that if you feel so much for India, why have you not given up your British citizenship? How would you respond to that? So, so let me answer that, Vishnu. Uh, actually, at the age of 18, I very much tried to consider it. My mother remembers it very well. And at that time, the scheme had come into place. And it seemed like something that was uh, very close to dual nationality or heading in that way. And, and I accepted this scheme. I would now I, I would find myself in a position that if I gave, surrendered my British citizenship, I would be taking the citizenship of a country that doesn't recognize my marriage and whose government has come after me. So the implications are very different now. But I absolutely did consider it. And if it had been a question at 18 of being uh, robbed of my right to live and work in India, I would I would certainly have taken Indian citizenship. Atish, is this essentially about your criticism of the Prime Minister and less about your citizenship and your identity? That your citizenship, the card, your identity, all that is a byproduct of what this is essentially about, your right to write about whoever you want, have it published, but then if it doesn't suit a particular narrative, people would go against you. Is this what this is really about? I absolutely feel that, Vishnu. For 40 years, I lived in India without any trouble. For at least 15, I've been in public life. My first book documented my relationship with my father. I've written, if this was the behavior of concealment, I was obviously going about it in a very silly way because I was so public about it. It never came up. It was never a question. Three months after this Time magazine article, and now we actually have it from someone within government who said, that someone was trying to please Mr. Modi, you know, that business of what Ian Kershaw calls working towards the Fuhrer. And Mr. Modi, instead of discouraging this kind of vindictiveness, sort of does what he always does. He, he sort of remains silent and lets it go on. And we've seen an atmosphere develop. We've seen people, the, the owners of your channel being targeted in similar ways. So everyone has a particular s solution or a particular way where they go after people. But the result is the same way. You have a complete, a complete a sort of a climate of fear prevailing over the country and, and dissent slowly being edged out. Atish, um, just, just another important point over here. Your mother was a single parent at the time that you were born. You were brought in over here. She had your sole custody. It's not in, up to you to decide who your biological father was. You came to this country at what, the age of two or three, You've lived over here for 17 years plus. Uh, and therefore, if your identity is that of being an Indian, do you believe that the, the, the rules which exist as far as OCI are concerned are silly in a sense? They cannot rob you of your identity. This I is mean, what it, you are. This, this is where is, you've lived. Absolutely. From the age of 2 to 18 and from the age of 25 to 35, for most of my life, I've been in India, and my mother was not only a sole mother, she was, all, she was a single mother, she was also abandoned by my father, who was very publicly, throughout his political career and his life, disowned us, disowned me. And, and so I was in no way ever a Pakistani. This was an Indian woman bringing up her son, by the way, in fairly straightened circumstances. And uh, in the 80s, and 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 so to, to suddenly create a situation, and you must understand, they haven't just made it so that I can take a visa and visit my grandmother and my mother. The way they've done it, they, it's very clear on their website. They've prepared the grounds to blacklist me. 
And it says very clearly that that, that person whose OCI has been cancelled in this way will not be granted a normal visa for India. So they've really put me at their mercy. And obviously you understand what happens if, for instance, they decide to grant me a visa, it'll come with that little quiet whisper in your ear. Now don't say a word about our government. Don't criticize. And so either it's a kind of career death or it's uh, the, the, the possibility of never seeing my grandmother and mother again. So uh, you mentioned your grandmother because she is uh, the other person who's raised you. She's 90 years old. With your permission and hers, we've got a little soundbite, as it were, of what she says. Uh, and, and just to be sure, uh, and it's a point that, Atish, you mentioned to me, she, she believes very strongly in the Prime Minister and this government. Uh, but this is, this, is, this is her message. Let's listen in. Atish Tasi's grandmother. And I'm 90 years old. And I am a follower of Mr. Modi. And I have brought Atish up as an Indian, which he is. And I would like him, I miss him very much. And I would like him to come home. Is that your worry that if, uh, if your, I mean, your card is rejected now, it's been taken away, that there could be a possibility of your not getting a citizenship to enter this country and at 90 she would not be able to travel to see you? Absolutely. They have every right. They're completely within their rights by their own by their own rules to deny me a visa. And uh, and, you know, it, it, it really breaks my heart because she, uh, you know, when my mother came back in the way that she did, it was in the 80s, a terrible scandal. And a, a lot of uh, people, especially a conservative religious person like my grandmother, could have very be, been very sort of she could have not accepted the situation. And what she showed was like an amazing big heartedness, which I've always associated with India, with the fact that she put aside the scandal of it and really um, always made me feel that this was my country, this was my family. And, and it's, it's just, it's horrible to see that, that that trust has been broken in some ways. Atish, are you going to uh, pursue this legally? Are you going to pursue this legally? I'm going to pursue this by every course that I have, whether it first means a government review, later it means the court. I don't have a choice, of Vishnu, because uh, the way that they, they put me in a position that if I don't pursue it legally, it's a question of home, of country, of everything. And so, so I, I, I wouldn't want, I don't, I, I, have to, I have to use whatever option I have at my disposal. Did you break any rules uh, in, in applying for the PIO card initially? Because that's the central sort of argument that you broke rules uh, all along uh, in terms of the nationality let, let, of your father. And I know you've written about him, but I'm, I'm yeah. talking about let, the very, technical let's argument. That that, that, let's be very clear that that initial uh, application was made by my mother when I was like 18 or 19. I was in college and she is very clear that she went forward as a single mother. She said this was her, this was her, this was her son, her, she, of which she had sole guardianship. Nobody asked her for any other information. And by the way, they bring up this question of, oh, you didn't submit your father's citizenship document, which, of course, we couldn't have because we were estranged from her. But also nobody asked for it, and they granted me the OCI. So it's a, it's a very peculiar way to break rules where, you know, my mother, if she did, she stumbled into it. And a civilized government can come forward and say, listen, there's a discrepancy, there's a problem. They also have it within their rights to grant an exemption. But that's not what they're doing here. They're trying to make an example of me. They're trying to go after me. So, so it doesn't suit their purposes at all to, be, to, to, to extend a kind of generosity and to show and to see that, like, there's no way that I'm displaying a behavior of concealment or a fraud or any of the things that they're accusing me of. Right. Well, Atish, it's going to be a, a long battle for you, but hopefully people are listening over here because your identity as an Indian, what you feel for this country, what you've written about this country as a, a, a well-known author, the fact that you've been brought up in this country, you have an Aadhaar card in this country, you have bank accounts in this country, you pay taxes in this country. Well, perhaps somebody should take notice of that as well before throwing the law book at you. Thanks very much, Atish, for speaking your mind on this program.